From the Fathead Studio in Speedway, Indiana, this is The Skinny. Man, am I still pretty? And he's like, you ain't pretty, but you're going to be all right. And now I'm just hanging on, looking at the wall, like flying this way. And I'm like, oh, man, I got to let go of this thing at some point. And then there's one that could literally pick you up. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, I'm not really sure about that, but yeah. That's called a helicopter. Well, <laughs> and the last lap was just chaos. I mean, like four wide, five wide. It's like, whatever, if you land it and send it into the fence, you're probably not going to get hurt. Bounce and then this insane roll, the car that Keegan was in. I mean, it. I don't know if it's the shape of the Beetle or what, but that thing sent it. So I was a supercharger specialist on my uh, old man's car. With specialist? Rocket. Yeah, it sounds cooler and true guy. <laughs> <laughs> I am Tony Stewart. I'm Mario Andretti. I'm Christy Lee. I'm Alexander Rossi. I'm Cruz Pedrigo. Hey, I'm Bubba the Love Sponge, and can you believe it? They asked me back. Welcome to the skinny, ladies and gentlemen. This is a continuation of one week ago. Bubba the Love Sponge is still in the studio. Still. Tears rolling out of my freaking eyes. Unbelievable. I'm Ken Stout. That's Rico Elmore. Dick Van Dyke apparently now Dick is Van running the control. Dick Van Dyke That's Willie. It. That's right. Dick, Dick Van, Van Dyke, Dyke Willie. Willie. Yeah. Keyboard Willie. Board work Willie. Willie. Yeah. yeah. Just everything. General jack of all trades, utility guy. <laughs> That's right. And when King gets full of himself and thinks that he's the only guy that can host the show, we'll throw Dick Van Dyke in there and him and Rico won't, won't miss a beat. <laughs> That's good. Huh? His <laughs> name's Michael Young. <laughs> We used to call him the track dude. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Apparently Van that's Dyke. all changed now. Yeah, whatever. Hey, 1989, you actually trademarked the name, but then at some point you made it your legal name. Bubba the Love Sponge, the entire thing, or just Bubba? No, my name, my name, my legal name is Bubba the Love Sponge Clem, because my real name is Todd Clem. Well, do I look like I mean that sounds like such a nerd. How did your parents feel about you legally changing the name? Well, they didn't have a say about it. I mean, I was a grown man at that point. Todd Allen. Know. Todd Allen Clem. I know they didn't have anything to say about it. I said, how do they feel about they it? They don't care. I mean, you know. I so mean, do you have a new social security card with no, that whole we, name on we it? We just have to go get, yeah, a new card, but the same number. I know, but yeah. the, with the Oh, the, yeah. Passport. So when I fly, like if I've ever flown to the Bahamas or everything, and you get these, like I went to the Bahamas, I've been to Jamaica. I, I don't really go out of the city much, out of the country much, but I have a few times. And so I go to Jamaica one time, and this Jamaican guy could not wrap his head around what my name was. And I go, he's like, Booba the Love Sponge Clean. I go, he goes, That's it, you got no, it. No, not valid, not valid, not valid. And I go, that is, my, here's my driver's license, my credit card, they all match. And they brought a supervisor in and everything. And, and, and So you had to go in front of the judge to do it, right? Yeah, you have to go in front of the judge. And so what are the, ju the, you, the judge when, was all for it? When you change your name, I mean, like to anything, you could change your name to, you know, Rico Schmico, you know, yeah. whatever you want to do. Meta World Peace. Got sure, it. Right. You they ask you three questions. They ask you, um, are you currently on any medication? And if you have, I had to kind of lie about that. That's but, what you I was know, gonna so, say. So you told and, them no. Um, and are you trying to change your name because you're trying to uh, deceive any creditor or anything like that, you know, like debt and things like that. So you like lied to them about that. And have you committed any crime? You know, again, I was probably three for three in some way, shape, or form. That's what, I was that's what they that's what they ask you when you change your name. Legally. Just looking for consistency, anyway. <laughs> yeah, so. you stay consistent. <laughs> they can't catch you in a lie. You know. Yeah. So when did you come up with the army thing? Because it's in, it's ingenious. I mean, much like the Kiss Army, right? Terre Haute, right? Home and a the... massive following. I mean, people. Oh yeah. And... Well, I I came up, but and really, if you think about it, you know, there's not a lot of ra terrestrial radio personalities that have a brand or logo. You know, I don't even know that Bob and Tom have a bona fide. There's a facial logo, but yeah. It's, but, you yeah, know, but yeah. like the Bubba Army logo, I developed it in 96. Um, uh, some guy just sent it into the show, like, you know, you know, like emailed it to the show. Hey, I'm a graphics guy. Uh, you know, what do you think about this? You know, you don't really have what you call your fans. It's not you, like, you know, you, you said I hate it and then used it. <clears throat> yeah, I was like, it's stupid. And then I put it on a T-shirt and a sticker and everybody's like, man, this is cool. I'm, bu I'm Bubba Army. And so but it gives your listeners something to say that they are, you know, yeah. like, you know, hey, I'm Bubba Army. So, you know, and Bubba Army doesn't mean you have to buy a shirt or it's just that you listen to the show. I so, saw a guy at the U.S. Nationals. 
Yeah, I saw several. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, he kept pumping it that he was going to be there, which was yeah, we had a, we awesome had a, for the event. You did the same thing for Gainesville, right? Which was which was awesome. But I got to talk to NHRA though. They jobbed me out with these with these passes. I need passes. I need those starting line passes. You need to be able have. to get in the car and drive it. <clears throat> well, I mean, just. Let's get through this. I need to be able to go up the microphone, grab the mic, say a few things. Yeah. No, but they they give me these little wristbands that are supposed to get me all access, you know, because I'm shooting footage for, you know, and I have over 100,000 subscribers now on my YouTube channel. I got 150,000 on my Facebook. I got 110,000 on my Twitter. You know, we we get anywhere between, you know, seven and nine million uniques a month, you know, via the radio. So... We we we're, we're we're not major influencers, but we're right there on the cusp of you know at least having some decent numbers. Those are those following. are what I would call real numbers. By yeah. the way, I mean you are an absolute personality. People know you nationwide, if not worldwide, and those are what I would call real numbers. Those numbers make sense to me. When I look at a Cletus McFarlane, oh my God, love that guy. How does that happen? Well, I mean, his you, amount you, of he, followers. You know, he is started. Insane. He started in my old in my old race shop. In Clearwater, he started, I, I left it, my race shop when I closed it down, when I had late models and sprint cars and all that stuff for my son. He has millions. And he started, and it's just, it's you, you find a niche, you find a niche, and you, and you know what, and you're consistent. Just like you guys. You guys, the one thing about you guys, you guys have stayed consistent. You know, you're like, oh, you don't get disappointed in your numbers or anything like that. You guys, and, it's, and then you guys have shown continued growth. You have great guests. You have great guests. And you just, you know, you just, it's consistency. You know what drives us nuts? So we have great guests, and some will share it out. Uh, some won't. And, and the numbers show that. We just wish that we had a better, you know, a better. Well, a it's, better. I, you guys have the same problem that Alan from American Coach has. So I just, I did, I stayed in American Coach this past weekend, as you know, you have one. And I no had her do a walkthrough of my my bus before i put all my luggage and stuff in it we did it it. it's already got eleven thousand views on on facebook it's got nine thousand seven hundred on youtube and it's got like fifteen thousand on twitter and i and i sent that i think it's got like maybe seventy four thousand impressions total well i sent that to alan to this morning and i said alan every one of your drivers john for i mean uh a capsi everybody who that you put in coaches need to do this but in order to, for them to do that, they're not going to do it on their own. They're going to be do it when you when you tell them you're not going to have your coach next year unless you give me a couple, two or three walkthroughs. Yeah, throughs Schumacher did it, I know, and, and, and but not enough. But yeah. not enough. And so you yeah. guys either be the same way. Hey, listen, guys, help us. We're trying to help the racing community. We're trying to help your brand. Although the guy you have in here might be bigger than your brand, so help well, us almost all the time. Yeah, and, and that's the challenge. They'll walk out of here and they don't really care. Because they're bigger than our but, brand, but that, so. but that's see, podcasting and this this video vlogging is all about taking care of, not being stingy. You know, I have, a bigger, I have a bigger everybody. presence than you guys, and I'm going to tweet every. I'm going to put a link to everything I have to the show because not only is Rico my friend and Dick Van Dyke, I don't know about you yet, Ken, but I'm just saying, <laughs> um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, but it's about taking care of each other. So. They don't need to be intimidated by the fact that they're going to, well, maybe, uh, you know, uh, 5,000 of my guys might go over. Well, you, yeah, 5,000 of your guys should go over and take care of those. You should be taking care of those people. Quit being a bunch of stingy little and take care of the boys a little bit. That's what it's all built upon. Joe Rogan, in 2008, Joe Rogan was on my Sirius XM show. And Joe Rogan, I was bigger than Joe Rogan at the time, digitally. And, and, and not digitally, but as far as being globally distributed on Sirius XM. And Joe took me aside and said, you need to do a thing called podcasting. After you get off the air, go into a different little studio, real quaint, and just sit down with a guest or your friend and do a 45-minute BS session. Just BSing about whatever. I go, Joe, I, I, at that point, I've already done two shows. I'm not, I'm not going to. And I called it Podcast Willie. I made fun of it. I made fun of it. And look at Joe now. And then I Is that when they fired you? <clears throat> yeah, well, in one of those transitions. Set a record there. It was good. In, uh, set a record. Want to get the skinny on other guests and different types of motorsports? Check out our YouTube page and get the skinny. The skinny is brought to you by Fatheads Eyewear. Fatheads Eyewear. Hardcore since 04. And American Coach. Innovation is our life force. 
Welcome back to Speedway, Indiana. This is The Skinny. Rico Elmer sitting right alongside. We have Bubba the Love Sponge in the studio here for the second show in two weeks. We got him to uh, to stick around for an extra show. Am I, so am great I, am I a here. top 10 guest? Am I a top 10 guest? Uh, you are a unique, I would say, number one guest in your lane. How about that? Whatever, Ken. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, top wait, 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 I don't wait, know wait, how much better wait, to shun up that with. turd. So really? before we went to commercial break, you were you were talking about Joe Rogan and and you were actually bigger than him at the time, and yep. he gave you that advice to, to do that, and that was two thousand eight, I think you yep, said it. Two thousand eight, and, and he was doing. And now he, look at him. I mean, and he and I and I couldn't be happier for the guy because here's what, the did thing. Did he start it then? I mean, I'm assuming he, he was yeah, starting he started going at oh seven oh eight, and yeah. and and he was just a comedian with that was the UFC guy, and but here's the thing. Joe Rogan should be the most terrestrial radio is has killed itself. You know, I'll just give you an example. Do you find yourself watching things on streaming or do you find yourself watching things on regular big, the big Fox, CBS, NBC, uh, ABC? Do you find yourself watching things on those four networks or streaming? Yeah, I'm, I would say which by the way, it's quite a progression. I would say it's a 50-50 mix now. Okay, you're 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 streaming. Not, you, you, I don't watch. Right. I don't you're watch not TV. the norm. So regular radio is net is network television and but they, di- but they, and they, digital. They've, they've killed it because they couldn't bring you what is actual. But or see, factual. Joe Rogan, if regular radio wouldn't be so scared of itself, oh yeah, and Joe Rogan would have killed it on KLS. Oh, yeah. He could and he could have been a Los Angeles based talk show guy and they all laughed at him they all laughed at him so joe says i'll go digital and joe joe and adam carolla and some of those guys got in early yeah carolla's and, big oh they're it killing too, right? it yeah. i mean carolla's yeah. doing honest to god carolla's doing thir- 20 to 30 million a year on but that, just but that's, wow. that all started with iheart when they started buying up properties and then they, they killed local radio and well, an opportunity for djs yeah, and, and personalities places. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that started out with Randy Michaels, who's a good friend of mine. That they made, you know, they turned iHeart in. It was originally iHeart was originally J Core, then it spun into Citycasters, and then it spun into I, um, you know, a Clear Channel, Clear Channel, Clear Channel, and then iHeart. Is that when they fired you? <clears throat> yeah, well, in one of those transitions, you set a record there. It was good. And set a record, um, but <laughs> but you guys have got to for the big guests. You guys have huge guests. You guys have had. I mean. Tony, Mario, Will Power, you know Scott Dixon. Scott we Dixon. We haven't had Will Power yet, but we I want. I thought you Will had Power. Will Power. I thought I saw. We him. were trying. We got close a couple times. What, we'll which we'll indie guys it. have you had? We had. Uh, we've had a bunch of them. Do you ever heard of? Do you ever heard of Scott Dixon twice? Do you ever heard of? Did they get any bigger than that? Dixon. We've had uh, Rosenquist. I had heard of Marcus on. Erickson. Marcus we Erickson. We just had Kyle Kirkwood. I had heard of on when they did the, in the Grand Prix, and he was great. You got a local guy that's got, you know. 1200 bucks of tires on there and we pay, you know, 700 to win. Welcome back to the Skinny. We have Bubble Love Sponge once again back in the studio with us. And, of course, last week we had a lot of fun. This show bounced around a little more racing-oriented this week, and he's a wealth of knowledge, as he's already talked about, a team owner, track owner. You keep your finger on the pulse of what's going on, the fan base, what's going on there, what to put in front of that fan base. As a promoter, it's an ever-changing landscape, and you got to try to stay ahead of that. It's not an easy task. We've scaled down. We've, we've scaled down now. We used to run, you know, I own Bubba Raceway Park in Ocala. It's the longest running racetrack in the South. It's been open. Con- we've been continually operating since 1953. And, uh, you know, so, and there's a ton of history behind my track. But, you know, local dirt racing in Florida. Now, listen, you know, you own Kokomo. You know, you own, uh, you know, you know, Tri-City. You own, you know, you got some, you know, Eldora, you know, Knoxville, Williams Grove. You know, there's there's some huge, huge franchises and geographically being located in the Midwest where racing really Florida is not, you know, a, known for its mecca of of racing. You Does know, it outside seem like of Dave, this, everybody comes down for the winter. I oh, mean, like the Bubba Winter Games. Yeah, or? I mean that's now that's Florida is the place to be for February. Yeah. All of racing is in Florida. But that's it. It's funny it, you say that because I'm just sitting here trying to think of a big name track like an Eldora that's in Florida. There's three. There's three tracks in Florida, in this order of prestigiousness: Volusia, Volusia. East, East Bay, yep, and my track. 
Okay. Th those are the three biggest. I agree with with, all with that. Volusia being the big biggest. Now East Bay closes in October of next year, so you oh, know really? it puts me up there. So what? <clears throat> well, all these car counts in in Florida are are dying. And listen, it's tough to be a local racer when a right rear is costing you you know two forty. Two. I mean these these. So what you got, did they used to be five years ago? Uh, you could for a for a modified tire you'd pay ninety nine dollars for a late model tire you'd pay one hundred and twenty eight and for a sprint car tires you'd pay one hundred and forty for a right. It's a hundred bucks more now, if not more. I've heard that I've heard that some of the right rears on World Outlaws are almost three hundred. So I mean, you got a local guy that's got you know twelve hundred bucks of tires on there, and we pay you know seven hundred to win. You know, you know, I mean, and that's before that's how you make money. Yeah, well, that's yeah. how you have no cars. <laughs> you know, right. I mean, that's so it, it, you know, local racing is just tough if you're not now that, you know, the Tonys and the Williams Groves. And, and I don't say this in a jealous way. I say, you know, they're killing it. I, I Tony and, and their promoters at Eldora are, are, are the best. They're the best like that. They they set the bar. You know, they that, really do. That deal out in PA is a total another series uh, a, a, oh, yeah. a different deal geographically man you could have you could have a fifth mile you know bad surface hardly any bleachers in the, in pennsylvania they come packed. they'd be packed yeah. they bring their lawn chairs <laughs> and their cooler you wouldn't have to have concession stands if there's a sprint car race at a mud hole somewhere in bfe pennsylvania you'll have 2200 people there you know we used to go run orange county in in new york with tony the all-stars would go there and I'm telling you, we pulled out of that place one night, and it was like a mirror, the track. It was, I mean, it was it like they rolled it in with a, uh, you know, like a steamroller, you know, a big roller. Dry slick? Did it yeah, dry, dry slick? Oh. Out? And that's the best racing. The yeah. best racing is when, now see, we have a hard time getting our track to slick off in, in Florida because we have so much sand in our clay. So it'll it'll rubber up before it'll slick off. We, it's tough to get a track to slick off in, in, in Florida. And we can. But it's it's all about humidity and and temperature and the water the, the water level too. Yeah, right? the water I mean, level. It, the, the 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 tide control determines your moisture of your well, track. They, the, as well, the official water hole over there at East Bay that they actually monitor to yeah, some degree. Yeah, you know? yeah. One so, one end of the what is it? Three and four. One or two. One and yeah. two. There's a water hole. One, down. one and two. So yeah. we we run every six weeks at my place. Um, usually have modifieds in like a 604 crate. Super late models are not big down there, so we do a 604 crate with a modified. Then we'll do, they have a Top Gun Sprint Car Series. We'll do that every six weeks. But when East Bay finally closes down, we're going to rethink our scheduling. But right now, it's, you know, it's not the way I make a living. My partner, Tom Bean, who's also my manager, he, has, he owns 105 Domino's Pizza franchises, so this isn't his, you know, this isn't the way we make our living. And, you know, all too often when we run, when we run too much, we find ourselves having to go eat to each other and say, "Hey, we got to put you know five grand in the bank this Monday to to be able to cover wow. the purses." So, Indiana and and the Midwest is a whole different racing mentality, just from the fan base wise. And is Florida? It's a it's tough sledding in Florida, except for February, and then we're killing it. But yeah. you can't live yeah. on one month a year. All the people from the Midwest now, we've got like we've become the the USAC open wheel destination in February. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to The Skinny. We have Bubba the Love Sponge once again inside of the studio. I'm Ken Stout, Rico Elmore, and the track dude back there running the controls. Dick We're just Van down Dyke. the street from Dick that Van famous Dyke. place Van Dyke. known as Indianapolis Motor Speedway and the home of the U.S. Nationals just about 10 minutes away or so, and that's where these guys were about a weekend ago. Hey, we were talking about your racetrack. Here's my question for you, and we'll, uh, we'll move on. Uh, geographically speaking, and the time of year, whenever you, were you guys were talking about PA and how they just kill it up there, I would also say that that goes with Wisconsin, Iowa, uh, here in Indiana, these Midwestern states. They kill it during the summer months, mm -hmm. and I think in large part because there's no place to go in the wintertime. So right. you, can, you can pull those people in there yearning for some good short track racing, where if you go to Florida, I mean, honestly, I know it gets hot in the summertime, but you guys can run it year-round. Does but it get stale? 
it, it does get stale. And most tracks in Florida shut down for the entire month of July and most of August because that's our rainy season. So you got about a 60% chance of raining out. And as a promoter owner, nothing's worse than you got all your staff there. You got all your record guys there. You've made your fries. You've got your hamburgers part up. I've spent, I've been on there. I've been on the track for 14 hours getting it ready. And at six, the merch crick. <clears throat> I get the merch crick with the merch jacked up <laughs> and I got all my record drivers there. My EMT, we're getting ready to hot lap and here comes a shower. And, you know, and that one that's not survivable, you know, one of those Florida just absolutely Downpour. super, super sucker soakers. Yeah. And you got to cancel now. Most tracks, it's not necessarily the most uh, fair thing, but we don't give rain out refunds. Your pit band's good for the next time we race. So, you know, that's kind of an old fashioned dirt track screw drop. Yeah. A lot of people do that. And uh, what's it cost you? What's one of those nights cost you? That cost me six grand. That because co- I still got to pay my record guys for at least a half a night. I still got a, I've, I got probably five or six or 700 in diesel fuel that I've burned up on graders and tillers and water trucks. Um, you know, so <clears throat> it's, it's, it's probably four grand, probably four grand right there. Boom. Rain out Willie. So we just, we don't run that a few months. weekends in a row, and that's uh, yeah, and it could happen, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, oh, it really easily. could happen a few weekends yeah. in a row. So, we kill, I mean, and, and so this year, actually, I've not officially, I don't know if I have the okay to, to say it or not. Just but, go ahead and do it. We won't. But I anybody. think we're going to do, instead of three nights of USAC, we're going to do five nights of USAC uh, in, in February. And uh, and that's the only series I'm going to have in. I'm not having Lucas. I'm not having. I'm only having USAC in. You know, we've kind of niched ourselves, Bubba Raceway Park. For, we are. This is our 13th year of the Winter Dirt Games, and you know, Rico sponsors Brady Bacon, and I think you sponsor Fast Time too for them too. We did, yeah. <clears throat> but um, uh, I love USAC. They are. They're. It's a great. It's a great show at your place. Oh. I remember the first time that I went there. I was. I was. Um, I was confused by uh, the lack of many people there, but that was like one of the first years. Yeah, and since then, and now it's it's all, just, just it's, it's building been, and building. All the people from the Midwest now, we've got like we've become the the USAC Open Wheel destination in February. No, and and Volusia just 100%. added <clears throat> Volu, and we, it's but it's taken us thirteen years to do that. But we are the like, like Volusia is the place to be. East Bay and Volusia are the two places to be. And we couldn't niche or get a, a, a late model or a four or a four ten wing audience because they have so many options at Volusia and so many options at East Bay. So me and my partner are like, listen, let's be the USAC niche, and that has been very sustainable. Now I'm not trying to be any certain way. But my track was you opened are, up. By, go ahead. Yeah, this is usually a setup for something bad. So yeah. um, Rico knows me. The skinny is brought to you by American Coach. American Coach, innovation is our life force. And Fatheads Eyewear. Fatheads Eyewear, hardcore since 04. Welcome back to The Skinny. We are here with Bubba the Love Sponge. Officially, the real name is Bubba the Love Sponge. Clem. Clem. Pretty cool. Um, hey, we were just talking about your racetrack and, and talking about some of the regionalisms, and, and I constantly think about the, the tracks in the Midwest that only have a few months of operating time, and we get those wet seasons yeah. as well. I mean, they don't open till April and maybe close in October, and we get some really some years where it seems like it rains every single weekend right. for four, five, six weekends. I've never noticed it other until I want to go to the lake for a minute. It's like, man, I feel like it's rained every weekend. But then I immediately think of those racetracks, and that's the seasons that will put somebody out of business. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, and the thing about it is we can run year-round, absolutely run year-round, but – we, the national drivers, as soon as October, 1st of November, whenever, I guess, Tony hosts the, the, the championship late model deal this year, you know, racing's done. And that's an opportunity for them to start tearing their stuff down. So we don't have the luxury of saying, well, hell, we could start doing some big shows in November, December, January, you know, because that's, we're the only state realistically that can be running because, you know, I mean, it's, it's 75 degrees on Christmas day in, in Florida, but we you can't aren't run in Iowa. <clears throat> well, I mean, like but, to Knoxville. but what I'm saying is, you, you know, put the studs in the tires. You're, you're, <laughs> you're still just, 
dealing with the local Florida guys because your national guys are now gearing up yeah, for, they're for the next year. year. Yeah. Yeah, and they're sure. not going to pull down there for a 2,500 to win late model race or right. anything like that. So that's what makes February so special is we've kind of fragmented on down to February that all the national guys have been to PRI. They've been to St. Louis. You know, they, they've, and they've had a, a month. They've been to the Chili Bowl. You know, you can't, you can't schedule anything on top of the Chili Bowl or even be. So Florida kind of starts now a couple weeks after the Chili Bowl uh, that everybody's gotten whatever special niche. Well, you know, the first thing you got to worry about is PRI. You can't, you can't race on PRI. You, you can't race on now. The Gateway's turned into a thing, a pretty damn good thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, the Chili Bowl's a thing. So we only really have nationally in Florida, you know, late January to 1st of March. And we've kind of all strategically found our dates and, you know, how they run. So um, we can run year round, but it's outside of February. We're just we're just marketing the same Florida racers. And you go back to racing's not that big in Florida. It's just not. You know. So talk to us about the history of that place. My track. Who owned it before you bought well, it? Well, there's been several owners. We're the longest tenured owner. Um, we bought it from a a, uh, a couple named uh, Mike and and Angie Peters, and they'd owned it for six or seven years. He's the one that put dirt back on it. It wasn't asphalt. It okay. started out a dirt track, then it got paved, and now it went back to a dirt track. And I think in '06. But my track. Now I'm not trying to be any certain way, but my track was you opened are, up. But by, go ahead. Yeah, this is usually a setup for something bad. So. Yeah. Um, Rico knows me. My track was opened up in 1952 by an African American man. So you got to think in 19. You think about dirt racing, and the group of people that are attracted to dirt racing, and the mentality that they have in 1952. And then you think think about an African in Florida, and yeah, and in the Deep South, yes. where as a black man in 1952, you know you're probably still looking over your shoulder a little bit. You oh, know no what I'm saying? question about it. I that. mean. I'm just going to be honest sad, with you. Sad, sad to say, sad, but yes. Sad to say. Yeah. So this stud, this dude, said, I don't care what society thinks. I don't care if, I, if, if people, I'm supposed to be afraid of why people. I, I'm opening up a dirt track. So I had an African-American man in 1952 open up a dirt track in the South. That's awesome. And, I mean, it is such a great story. And uh, his family still owns the property next to the dirt track. And uh, how much land do you know how much land it was originally? Well, my my plot of land is 51 acres. So it was just that plus another 10 that they still own. So it was like 70 acres, 61 acres, 51 of which was the track or, you know, grounds around there. Any idea what he did? What is what his business was or how he farming? He was a farmer and, and my my track was a field that he farmed. And he niched out, and my track was a little bit smaller than it is now. They've made it bigger over the years, and then I've when I I've made it a little bit wider. But uh, what a stud! What what a guy! What a what a guy to go against the grain of society. Oh, yeah. You already got three or four things against you, right? Yeah. And you're like, I'm a black guy, and I'm going to open up a dirt track. Absolutely, now, the, no, no not, fear, not in tw- motivation, right? not in 2023, but in 1952. That's a stud. Yeah. And I need to... Is that story told on your And you said uh, the family page? is still there Fam- to this and, day? In fact, my flagman, African-American guy, is a descendant of that guy. Oh, his his awesome, dad's dude. dad or How something. How cool is that? Yeah, he's a flagman. His name's Sorry, Mike. Sorry, can't interrupt. His, his name's that, Mike, and he... he's the... It, it, so it's... I, I probably need to have a memorial race in that guy's name. Yeah. Oh, that's year. a great really idea, year. man. But it's the history of the track on your webpage that that No, and I need to do that. You know, me being I mean, a great marketer that I am, yeah. I've I've missed the ball on that. That would be so huge because that's an amazing story. What I'd like to be is I think this is gonna be our seventy second year of operation. I'd love to do a seventy two thousand dollar you know, I mean Yeah. I'm not Tony Stewart. Yeah. You know, I'd have to get, you know, Maybe call Bernie up for a sponsorship with yeah, American he'll Coach throw, Kicker. He'll throw down. <laughs> the fathead deal. Yeah, get you, know. you a couple scag lawnmowers in the middle you of know, it. If you I know. Could get, if I could raise the money, I'd love to do a $72,000 to win. Hold on. USAC open wheel race. And, and, and calls me up. I hang up on the guy. I go, who's this? This is Deion Sanders. I go, yeah, nice try. See you later. Hang up. <laughs> call, calls back.
Welcome back to the skinny. Ken Stout here and Michael Young back there running the board. Still hanging. Went Dick a Van, different Dick direction. Van Dyke. There. Dick Van Dyke. Dick yeah. Van Dyke, as he's been dubbed here and uh, well fitting as well. Rico Elmore sitting right alongside and Bubba the Love Sponge. In the studio with Have us. Have I done okay today? I feel like I've you know been a little overpowered. You've been uh, you've been serious here the past few moments, but we've been talking about serious yeah. stuff. Let's yeah. lighten it up a little bit, man. Let's I get, mean, let's get real serious. Dion Sanders, one of my very best friends, met Dion in 1994, and so I'm f- I'm big and fat. I'm fatter than I was then, huge, and uh, I'm laying in my pool. And I'm on, I'm working a top forty radio station called the Power Pig, and we're playing urban, you know, like, top forty records. And I'm the night guy, but I'm allowed to talk a lot and you know hang up on kids. And so I, I get a call, huh. for, and I go, "Hello." And he goes, "I need to talk to Bubba the Love Sponge." And I go, "Who's this?" Dion. Now this is when he's playing for the Reds, and he's at spring training in Lakeland, and he's got this new record coming out. Must be the money. And he did some research and asked, you know, the various people, who's the hottest guy on the radio at night that plays, you know, rap music? And that my name came up. He finds my number, and 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 calls me up. I hang up on the guy. I go, who's this? This is Deion Sanders. I go, yeah, nice try. See you later. Hang up. <laughs> Call calls back. Calls back. Goes, hey, hey, hey. This is Deion Sanders. I'd like to come on your show in the studio and roll my my new record tonight. And I go. Oh, if, if you're really Deion Sanders, 4002 Gandhi is the address. I'll be there at 7 o'clock. You get there about 8. I'll have an hour to promote you, and we'll have you on there. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, this is Deion Sanders. This is at his height. This is when, you know. So he, he shows up. Fastest guy on a planet. Show, shows up, play his record. Uh, he instantaneous, him and I instantaneously develop a rapport. He gives me his number. Um, we keep in touch. He knows I'm a Packer fan. In 96, when the Packers play for the NFC Championship game, he calls me up and says, Sponge, I know your Packers are playing in Dallas this weekend. How about you fly out and stay with me? So we go to the game, okay? We go to the game. Now, I got all access, all world. I'm with Dion. Like, we literally, his limo drives into into the thing, in, right, into the sally port, and he gets out. And I'm in the locker room, and I'm seeing Troy Aikman and Emmett Smith and Michael Irvin and all these dudes, and I'm like, what? You know, so... the I get this pass. Well, the game starts. Well, I go right over to the Packer side because I'm a Packer and I'm looking at Reggie White and Brett Favre and Chris Jackie. And I'm looking, you know, like, whoa, you know, my God. So it's a tight game, 96 NFC Championship game. It's like 21 17 halftime. So I go, I can't get into the, the only place I can't go is the Packers locker room, but I can go into the Cowboys locker room. So I go in there and Dion goes, Sponge, I haven't seen you all game. Where you been? I go, Dion, you know, I'm a Packer fan. I've been over. Seeing Reggie and stuff, and he goes, got real serious. Don't forget to who brought, don't forget who brought you to the ball game. I stayed on the Cowboys side the entire time. I never I never left. But um, D- Dion was just down uh, pre COVID June of 2020, and at that time Shador was a graduating senior in high school and was determining what. A lot of people don't know this, but he first committed to Florida Atlantic to work for Willie to go be. Uh, Willie Taggart's quarterback. So before Dion got the Jackson State game uh, job, uh, Shador had already committed. You can go back and Google it and, and find it. He committed to be a Florida Owl, uh, Florida Atlantic Owl, and it was a big press conference. And Dion came over to to Tampa and stayed with me for a few days. But he, so he tells me, and I had this up on my YouTube channel and that kind of deal. And we're getting ready to make a video of it now. But so Dion calls me up and says, Sponge. You want to meet me over at Berkeley High School? Uh, Shador's getting some private lessons from Tom Brady. Now, that's when Tom Brady just signed with the Bucks, like the hottest yeah, thing in the world. Right. So I'm like, uh, yeah. So I go over there, and I got video. You've seen it. I got video footage of Shador and Tom Brady going through drills, and then I got video footage of, of Tom Brady launching 50-yard bombs to Dion. I'm older than both of you. How old are you, Bubba? 54. Uh, I got your beat. Yeah, but you look good as hell, cuz. Yeah, 55. I got the back. Uh, that's on the money. That's on the money. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. 
started. Good. And if I'm going to step to show left, and I'm here, right, the only thing I'm going to do is look at my head, body, everything is going to be here. How do those look to the two of you? you know, practice. Wow. So I got that on my YouTube channel. It's been up there for a long time, but we're going to this week, actually, as I, as I speak, my editors are making, uh, um, they're going to take one of Tom Brady's instruction videos from what I taped and then match it to a play that Shador did against TCU and then go back and forth. And, and that should go viral as hell. Cause I mean, so he committed to, a, to Florida Atlantic. Dion got the Jackson state job. He then immediately transferred to Jackson State. Dion did two or three years in Jackson State, then went to Colorado. And I just got Dion a free Skag mower, too. Did you know that? How'd you meet the guy from Skag? Uh, at the Gator Nationals. So I go to the Gator Nationals for the first time, and I, you know, I'm, like, I, I'm like, I need to start marketing more. Because, you know, when I get in I front of people... I think this is going to be a long story about Yeah, yeah we're, we're going we're gonna to take a quick break, and I'm glad Dion got a free skag mower. I'm sure he needed that. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back with more from Bubba the Love Sponge. Want to get the skinny on other guests in different types of motorsports? Check out our YouTube page and get the skinny. The skinny is brought to you by Fatheads Eyewear. Fatheads Eyewear, hardcore since 04. And American Coach. American Coach, innovation is our life force. Welcome back to The Skinny Man. We've had a couple of great shows here, courtesy of this guy, Bubba the Love Sponge. The stories are endless. It's crazy. The career is so diverse from left to right, racing in the middle. And I own a dirt track. And, and believe it or not, with all the shenanigans, I bet you'd like to have it, let's just call it 50% of the legal fees back. Oh my God! That's what. That's <laughs> that would be a lot of money, right? I had one. He was telling me this before the show. I go, sure, bring it up. That'll be perfect. One, one of my lawsuits, my latest one, cost me eight hundred fifty thousand. That's insane. I mean, over the course have of any your of you guys career, ever? Let me just ask you this: Have any of you guys ever been in a federal courtroom? No. And yes. have any of Rico, of course, have any of you guys been on trial before in front of a jury? No, no, not once, not twice, not three times. I've been in front of a jury four times. I'm four and zero, oh, but I've been in front of a jury four times before. One of which I was facing five years. But I am four and zero oh with most human beings have never stepped in front of a courtroom. If you go into a federal court, generally you're losing. Yep, that's and I, the and it's I, a ninety really, percent yeah. rate. And I won. Prosecution. I won to the point where the people that were suing me, we settled. And what gets <clears> me is you also ran for Pinellas County Sheriff. And got, hold on, 40% of the vote. 40% of the vote. And 92% of the African-American vote, mind you. Just saying, for those scoring at home. Just saying. For those scoring at home. Let's go back to It's Dion's. like your life. I mean, boom, boom. Yeah, let's go back to Dion's skag mower. You got to tell the real story about it because Dion mows his own grass. Yeah, well, so I, the Gator Nationals, I, first of all, Tony gets involved in drag racing. And you know me, me, Rico, Tony, Sumo, we've been a posse for years. I met, I met Tony in 2000 when, when Dan, through Danny Lasowski. So I've known Tony for a long time. Um, and he's now involved in drag racing. I, my dad took me to my very first NHRA event in 1983 here at the U.S. Nationals. And um, so I've, I've did been... Did you walk <clears throat> 49,000 steps? I did not have the Rico. I did not know you. I don't think you had the stroke you did back then when were you were... Were you speaking from experience when you said 49,000 yes. steps? That's the worst. Top of the bleacher, 9,000 degrees. remember my dad degrees. parked in this field, and I go, Dad, where's the racetrack? And he goes, shut <laughs> up and be lucky that you're going. We're going to go see Big Daddy Don Garlitz, and he got half of his foot blowed off, and we're going to go, and he works on his own half stuff. His foot blown off. And he said, and I said, okay. okay. So got we, it. we worked, well, I mean, walked and walked, and I was just lucky to get a Coke that day. So, you know... Um, so I'm like, listen, I, I told Erica, I said, listen, with me being a, a, an influencer or a content creator looking for different types of content outside of the radio world, you know, I can put radio content all day up, but I need to diversify like I'm doing that homeless deal and things like that. Well, I said, I need to use some of my connections to get into things that I like and that my and that my audience likes and drag racing, you know, is really pretty cool. 
for my audience. And so I picked up the phone. I called in HRA. I, first of all, I called Rico. said, you're going to be there. He said, yeah. And then I called. I'm the spokesperson for Giant Recreation World. I knew everything that you got to have to go to the races. You got to have a place to stay. You got to have a golf cart. And you got to have passes. So <clears throat> got a hold of NHRA. I said, I'll interview three drivers on my show. I'll give away, you know, two, work, two, two weeks worth of ticket giveaways and promote the show. And if you saw, the Gator Nationals set attendance records this year. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say I would that the, skew it. I wouldn't say the U.S. Nationals did that good on, 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 on audience. But I got a hold of them, and they gave, me all, you know, they gave me all this stuff to promote it. And so in doing so, I met, there's this girl named Ashley that's a PR girl, and Eric, the guy who's the general manager for the May, what's the May? Main, Maynard. <clears throat> Maynard family that runs yeah, the Skag, that runs Schumacher's team. Yep. Um, he's a he's Bubba Army. He listens to the show, so he tells his PR girl. He's got a great story too. You know, he was involved. Like he owns wrestling rings. Oh, I know. Like one of his businesses. And, right. Yeah. So he wants to meet me. So she brings me over there to meet this guy. He's Bubba Army, and uh, Randy, the CEO of Skag, happens to see me traips, traipsing through the hospitality deal, and he goes, "Hey." You must be a pretty big deal. And I was like, well, I'm just some radio guy. And him and I got to be friends. And I started. And he's the greatest guy ever. He's probably one of, honest to God, the most salt of the earth, like want to do good. You know, he's the kind of guy that will pull for, as long as you're not racing against him, when you win, he's happy for you. <clears throat> you know, most people aren't happy for you when you win. You're like, ah, guy won. He's like, ah. But I met Randy from Skag, started talking about Skag mowers on my show. Um, had all this Bubba Army, you know, buy Skag mowers, and they had some huge sales in Florida. And so I develop a relationship with Randy, um, start doing some commercials for him on the show and stuff. Well, <clears throat> I see Dion on his Instagram needs a zero-turn mower. He's like, hey, I just got here at Boulder, and I need to get me a zero-turn. I, like I like to mow on Sundays as my therapy. I like to do my own lawn. So I call Dion up on the phone. I go, Dion. Don't don't get you. I already got five dealers. I got the Toro guy, the X Mark guy, the Bad Boy guy. I, I I got my pick. I go. That's great. None of those are better than Skags. I can have a Skag on your front door tomorrow. Let me make one phone call. So I call Randy up in Mayville, Wisconsin. Randy, do you know who the hottest brand right now in college football is? Do you? And this is before they beat TCU. This is just when the hype was coming. I said. You know, he's a spokesperson for Aflac. He's a spokesperson for Subway. He's a spokesperson for Kentucky Fried Chicken. I don't know how many tens of thousands of dollars he charges them, but for the price of one zero-turn mower, he will organically do some Instagrams and things like that for Home you. Run hit. Let me. Can I promise him a skag? He go. Randy goes. Here's the dealer. So I texted Dion and Randy together. Put them on, and the next day. Dion's driving a Skag and now kind of an un, unofficial spokesperson for him in his first video that he did on Instagram, mowing with the Skag, did a million views. Oh, wow. So Randy, I guess, was having this PR meeting with the two PR people, and Randy kind of yelled at him and said, I, this came back from an inside source saying, I pay you 35000 I pay you 50000 to do marketing, and I got some dumb radio guy that's got Dion Sanders for free. <laughs> what am I doing wrong here? <laughs> It's all about marketing, and it's what you guys need to start doing with your guests. We'd love to have Dion on here. Think we could remote him? Uh, it's I, kind I, of a big I deal. I don't know today. if he's going to quite talk about racing. You know, you know. That's <laughs> oh, okay. We can talk about football. We, we can talk about whatever he wants. We can talk about. Did you world. guys ever hear when he came to the Indianapolis Combine for for the? Uh, oh yeah. When he he literally helicoptered in, ran the forty, kept running out the back door, out the back door, and jumped in a limo. He did. He, he ran a four two six. Ran the fastest forty ever at the time. At the time, and hold on, and said, and they said, "Well, don't you want to meet with all thirty one teams?" He goes, "I'm going to meet with six teams because I ain't going any any lower than that. I'm not talking to the Bears or anybody else." Well, I said he's the fastest human on the planet. I mean, he and, he was and unbelievable. He, said, and he, he point blank said they said said uh, said, "Well, they need to see your uh, you know your catching and blah 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 and all this and that." He goes. They saw all they're going to see. I'm he, leaving. Dion's got two expressions that I use a lot. If it don't make money, it don't make sense. And if I'm going to get out of bed today, somebody's going to pay for it. Wow. <laughs> we got to wrap things up here. We're out of time, unfortunately. Hey, man, I'm going to hold your feet to the fire. No, hold on. Share this thing for hold us. Hold on. Let me make one last thing. 
because of my marketing and because I want to make you guys, I want to help you guys. And the, everybody that goes on this show should have this same mentality. But my, my episode, because of the way I'm going to help market, will be the most watched episode in the history of the skinny. That's awesome. I Thanks, man. It. I promise you. I bet and it. if every host had that same mentality, you guys would exponentially get bigger. We appreciate it. And you guys got the talent. You got Dick Van Dyke on the one and twos. <laughs> you got Rico with the DUIs. And we got you, as I don't even know where to start We're with you. Just fill in the seat. Super That's flies. Cool, the oh, super yeah. flies. Bubba the Love Sponge. Now you got the skinny on him, or at least a small bit of it. Thanks for watching.